But anyway, the, uh, as soon as she turned off the engine, all the electrics went. Okay, so what I'm doing at the moment is I'm turning, I'm uh, informing High Head Coast Guard of our situation. Au revoir, Bo Maris. Canarvin. Sorry. destination for this morning or at least our first waypoint to our destination this morning is on the other side of this boat here and you can just make out the piers of Menai Bridge. It's a lovely morning in the Menai Strait which is more than can be said for the last couple of mornings in the Menai Strait. It's been absolutely ghastly. Over there is the boatyard with ABC Power Services, Power Marine, and we can give them a recommendation for fixing our engine. Thank you very much, ABC Power Marine. Once again, we were passing through the swellies. Gaynor found a really good video about this and watched it. There's port starts in there, there's the crack in the ground. We made a brief stop in Carnarvon to get the latest information on Carnarvon Bar and to see Gaynor's family once again. This is the voyage um, and the channel we're going to go down tomorrow. There's a man fly fishing. <laughs> and this is my family. There's my mum, my sister, Adrian and my brother. So mum, my, mom, my daughter calls you sassy. So I'm losing weight. What do you say to that? What? I'm losing weight. What's your normal comment when you say I'm losing weight? You are losing weight, yes. And? Oh, you haven't said the rejoiner. There's always a rejoiner with you. Typical. Well, you're not as blue. <laughs> <laughs> We're putting in the um, waypoints for Carnarvon Bar. And this has been got off the harbour master and it shows the track you have to follow to get in and out of Carnarvon from the fairway boy right up past the sandbar and in and these are whoops and these are the GPS's so what we're doing is we're entering them or Gainer is <laughs> give us a smile we're entering them into the chart plotter and um, I've entered the first one here Carnarvon C1 and it's just there and this is what the um, chart had chart has so this is why it's very important to get the um, uh, the, the boys from Carnarvon now when we get there in reality we should see the the green boy and the red boy on either side of this but it goes to show you how far these have been moved getting yourself organized um, is definitely a key skill uh, if you do go for a cruising live scale. We've just had a parcel delivered to the Carnarvon Harbour Trust, care of good old Salty Lass. But just you just have to think ahead and it's that simple really. <laughs> exciting thing that I wanted was my Trefoil Guild Voyager book um, because uh, I'm still in the Trefoil Guild and I'm now going to be completing my silver badge and I thought you would share with you the fact that oh, for my skills I'm going to attempt my Yacht Master so <laughs> 
I think Bev and I, have did, we're both going to do it together, but we've uh, decided that we really need to um, get our yacht master because we need to be as prepared when uh, crises happen, which unfortunately they seem to do on Salty Lass. So, you know, we've got to be as prepared as we can be. And um, at least by doing the yacht master, it will give us some skills. So we will be sharing that part of our journey with you and uh, I hope you want to come along. Au revoir, Bo Maris. Carnarvon. Sorry. Au revoir, Carnarvon. That was a really nice uh, stay. We were only there one night, but it was very full on. We left Bo Maris in the morning, got to Carnarvon, we saw my family. We did the shopping, we had showers, we did the washing, and we got some mail. So The plan was to sail straight across the Irish Sea to Greystones, but after we crossed Carnarvon Bar, the sea was quite swelly and we had a strong wind more or less on the nose. We reefed both sails and put the wind on our beam and headed for our alternate destination of Porth Tintine on the Clin Peninsula. As always our plans have gone astray we were going to go to Greystones in Ireland now we're going to go to Port Dinkle in Wales As you can see we're playing with the traveller it's right over and the wind is coming from that direction um, I think it lets us go closer to the wind but frankly I haven't thought this out and I haven't got a clue Well, Bev and I are currently at anchor, uh, so um, Beverly's done the calculations and I'm hoping it's all going to be alright, but we'll, talk, we'll share with those calculations with you in a minute. But, uh, but we are at least at anchor and um, we're at um, a little place called Porth Port Dinorin, no, Porth Dinorin, I'll have to spell that for you because it's Clearly I haven't got it, but anyway, it's a pretty little place and I can imagine, because um, we're in autumn now, well I like it now actually to be honest, so it doesn't need to be summer or whatever, I like it now. So here we are at Porth Dinnerlin, okay, so what we've got here is this is where we are currently at one meter um one meter and that's where we are at this moment in time so we're actually quite low close to low water um but we've got 2.7 under the keel so what that means is um that if it was uh, lower um that's 1.7 under the keel at low water so that's what we've got um, at high water it's going to be 4.3 meters uh, depth plus our freeboard and everything uh, so that's going to be five meters so Beverly's put out uh, as <coughs> so we have put out uh, 30 meters of chain so hopefully we have got our calculations correct but that's what we've got there. <sighs> so this is where we anchored last night. Rather pretty little place to be honest. <sighs> but although it'd be nice to explore this place, the uh, when weather is good, hopefully, for going across to Ireland. Oh, I don't think you can see it in this video, but that red light up there is flickering. I'll just put the engine light on and let's see if that works better. Yeah, I think you can see it in here. Okay, so we've noticed this flickering light. We're not really in the best of positions to do anything about it here. Um, so
so we've gone quickly through the options and um, the closest place with 24 hour access is Hollyhead but we're going to have to get a shimmy on uh, because we've got the tide going with us for five hours then the tide goes against and it's going to be difficult getting into Hollyhead um, but so it means we just need to get a shimmy on um, but because the um, the lighter is flickering the most um, probable cause is that something in the alternator has gone maybe for instance when it got hosed down um, with water um, one of the diodes got wet or something like that but the thing is we've got to get it checked and uh, looked at okay so Beverly and I have hoped to um, do the what happens if your engine fails situation <laughs> under nice happy conditions but as always we're going for the steep learning curve um, so what's just happened is um, uh, we came off the mooring um, and Beverly well basically Beverly noticed that the lights were flickering uh, which basically uh, means that you've we've got an alternator issue um, now where we were on the anchorage there's nowhere to actually deal with that so what we've decided to do is we're sailing to Hollyhead uh, because there's a good chandlers there and there'll be good people to um, sort out the issue as soon as Beverly turned off the um, engine all see them but that moment was caused by those lobster pots over there oh. Beverly was videoing me so she wasn't concentrating on the lobster pot anyway it's still recording according to us okay. oh. 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 yeah go on anyway so there's good people to um, deal with the alternator but anyway the uh, as soon as she turned off the engine all the electrics went and that's because there was a surge uh, in the electricity supply and that turned off the main breaker so I've turned on the main breaker we have got electric on the boat we're charging the batteries through our solar panels I don't know what else we can do really the only other alternative is to go back to the moorings and just see if we can find somebody there the wind picked up and so did our speed as we headed across Carnarvon Bay. We changed into our fileys and settled down for a passage. What I'm doing at the moment is um, I'm informing the Hollyhead Coast Guard. I'll just turn off for a minute. Okay, so what I'm doing at the moment is I'm, turning, I'm uh, informing Hollyhead Coast Guard of our situation and our lap and long. Um, with a view that um, at least they know where we are and that we're still in contact and um, they need us to give us another Latin long in an hour's time so that's what I'll do Well we're sailing but I think Bev and I are a little bit tense um, purely because um, the UK is incredibly tidal um, we're on a north going stream at the moment, uh, so we're currently making what we're making, Beverly? We're doing about 6.1 knots, speed over ground, and I'm thinking of easing the main out because I think we're getting a bit. Okay, so we're doing 6.1 knots, yeah. speed over ground, and Bev's just going to ease the main out just so that we calm, calm our speed a little bit there. Not the speed, the angle. The angle, just calm the angle. We want to keep the speed, but we're... we don't want to overstress anything. We don't want to overstress anything. Um, things going whack. So, uh, yeah, so we're um, doing six point. What are we done now? Because I suspect we've gone lower. We're still doing six knots. Don't worry about it. Okay, so we're doing six knots. Um, but the weather's getting worse. <laughs> weather's getting worse. Um, but the thing is, um, we've got to be able to make um, the north 
um, South Stack, which is at the bottom of Anglesey, uh, by a particular time, which is about 12 o'clock, isn't it, Bev? One o'clock. One o'clock. And we'll be uh, damn lucky if we do it. And we'll be very lucky if we do it. So we've got to be able to make that. So we've got to sort of like make uh, time, which is why we're doing six knots, because if we do six, then that will just bring down our um, speed uh, up.